one of the experiments I've been doing recently is spread trading intraday. Now, I was a spread trader several years ago for many years on commodities. <clears throat> typically, spreads, and I'll do a new separate segment about spreads. Um, typically, spreads, you, you swing trade, kind of short-term, long-term, mid, mid-term portfolio. But with the volatility lately, now, now today, granted, equities is going to be probably sideways, but a little bit short towards the short side. We look at the overall strength, and you could build a ratio, or you could do one to one, depending on notionals. Again, that'll be for a different segment. Or NQ right now, it's just it's a tougher day to trade today. NQ is a little bit stronger to the weak side than ES. If you want to measure 30 minute auction bars, because I also do time price opportunity, kind of like a student of that, where we are seeing some support from the prior day's um, high volume node. Um, so on the ES side, I just kind of am looking at um, a level I've drawn to say, hey, look, I want to participate in this market, but it could cost me, you know, I'm not, not going to probably make as much trading micro every day as for, for a living. So you guys out there with like these Apex accounts, we're looking at, if price continues every 30 minute auction bar lower, even though it's gonna work against you sometime, rather than take the heat of the outright, I'll take the stronger one and short it and buy the opposite um, correlated market like ES behind me. Okay, now this reduces some of the volatility. It also reduces some of my profit potential because at the same time, as you see right now, I'm losing but rather, let's put this on the little dome here. See, I'm down 170, 160 on NQ and up 50. So I'm reducing that some of that friction that I'm going to eat, right, from one of these markets. Now, where am I wrong? And, I, and I'll see if the market wanted to take a turn and go the other way, which, again, in a sideways day, the spread could possibly not work. Well, again, it's, it's just going to make you survive for another day. And then when this model is on a continuation day such as you know price structure breaks then you can just ride it the other way so right now I put, I've drawn a line here at the top of this 30 minute bar that's where I'll, I'll be wrong now I got in a little bit late anyway but that's where I'll be wrong and I'm gonna lose whatever that spread gives me if it goes the other way and starts confirming it's a reversal for the day going up towards these other bigger larger gamma exposure levels that I also look at so but if it rolls, keeps rolling down, I have kind of a target for a, a general area from Friday's lows, you know, somewhere around there. I'll start looking to see where the PNL is and just flatten that spread out. But this way, I'm kind of, I've already dodged whatever news that could happen that's on the calendar. I've also know and I'm aware that if anything pops up suddenly geopolitically, I mean, I can't control that. But one thing I can control is, you know, my my risk is still smaller to participate in two large notional products. And if it works in my favor, fine. I make a big reward. If it doesn't, I take what it what uh, where I'm wrong, and I'll and I'll try and play the other way. Long term goal here is most of the time you're gonna be able to ride out bigger trends and the stronger side of the equity that you went long is going to uh, relative difference make you more um, than the other contract that you went short so or long vice versa so you know like as of right now like i said not looking good for me uh, but we're still inside this 30 minute auction so i don't want to <clears throat> as an intraday player i don't want to Keep changing my mind 75 times a day on smaller charts. Smaller charts are maybe for your entries. I want to use, like, you know, a pullback on a five minute, etc. I want to use my 30 minute auction, like my bar as an auction. We trading now still inside the 930 to 10 o'clock bar auction. Okay. If we trade above it, close above it, I will have to have a change of heart. Um, cause that's what market is. 
and take my loss and then attempt to um, look for some more confirmation. That's why my entry was delayed on this one. I was waiting to see if, what happened to this auction and too late. So now I got myself in this spread potentially a little bit too low. Okay, especially the way we're reading the auction. I, mean, I got this one on my demo account because um, this one right here is live data though. So I can start reading and monitoring the pro TPOs. So this D period, which is the 10 o'clock to 1030 auction right now, is uh, left pretty much behind this C period for now. Found support here from Friday's high volume, right? So it'd have to stab at that and break through for it to continue down. So potentially that's where my loser can be. If it breaks through that, it can fly down fast. And this is NQ, but we're, we're talking about ES as well. And that's where maybe this can meet with Friday's lows, with NQ having much more strength to the downside and um, giving me like a smooth, smooth selling trade. Uh, that's, that's hedged. So again, I'll show you guys right now for transparency. Commissions are slightly higher because you're doing two lots in and then you're going to do two lots out. So you're going to have a round trip of eight commissions, but it's just so much less drama and stress. Now, losers you're going to have because you're still directional, but you're still, you know, able to breathe through these trades much longer um, and allow them to work on a little bit higher time frame auctions like these 30 minute bars that I have here on NinjaTrader. So, okay, if I go here, this is, oh, my NQ, of course. Excuse me, guys. So I was going to eat hot sauce for breakfast. So we're still inside this 30-minute bar. Now, what they could be doing on the order flow, I don't know. I kind of just don't care. I, you know, they could be playing a lot of, it's like, look at these robots and, and icebergs all over the place. So I don't know what they're setting up retailers for. I don't know. I have no idea. It's just back and forth, back and forth, ping pong action. Um, looking at Trader Map Pro where there's more liquidity filters that I'm using. I can, with, on Bookmap, Trader Map Pro, see the liquidity live time and see, you know, where there's thicker players. But it's quite balanced and we're in the middle of this. It's going to work my, my way or not. <clears throat> doesn't matter the whole point is that using a spread and i can do this on any kind of intraday commodity soybeans versus wheat uh you know gold versus silver obviously uh considered the correct ratios now one of the spreads i was thinking today would have been a little better had i slowed down just a couple more minutes to myself is is um small caps versus large cap we can see that um, right here, if you look at RTY, it's definitely diverged away from the, the larger cap in tech. So what would have been a better trade is gone to Russell's long and shorted like NASDAQ or ES maybe. And that would have probably been a really good uh, trade. We would have probably been weighing the profits by now and, you know, um, been, been one and done really. Um, but here you see again, uh, the, the spread is just kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's holding that rubber band. Let me put up this dome. Now, this dome is just level one. I don't need the level two here. Well, what we're doing is we're, you know, by being long one, short one, we're kind of slowing down that, uh, the stretch that how fast that rubber band moves. We're tightening that. We're putting a thicker rubber band around that market, around that trade. So it just doesn't get away from us as fast. Um, it's going to get away from you. It's going to get away like here. But it's just not going to be um, as as hard, right? So, and again, um, you know, being on the right strength, uh, what I'm doing in this case is, you know, using trading view and a comparison chart to see which one is buyer uh, buyer follower, leader follower, because that's where the whole nuance is too in the spread. You know, um, these equities, there's usually one leading the other, and um, Typically, we find it being NQ, you know, quicker to the downside, quicker to the upside. So we got to monitor this trade, and um, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Now, one of the uh, things to observe is 
we see Friday's value area low, which was at 13114 three quarter, and we went and touched that to the T and got reversed. So definitely have bullish support here. Again, market auction theory stating that we opened up inside of the prior day's range that you know most likely we were expecting this but since i'm testing this spread and it's just on a cheap apex account also what i'm testing is the wit and willingness to be wrong at this 30 minute auction bar if we go above it and close above it and then consider going long and then trying to make that loss if that happens that scenario if this then that um if not then um uh, write it down certainly isn't looking like that yet this area just has a lot of support in it um uh, but let me see here our d period on our tpo is kind of just stating that too we're looking at possibly this thing rotating but uh break above this tpo is just going to probably just say that's it this market will continue rotating up and then i'm going to have to change my my spread, I'm going to have to cut it out and then reassess what, what I'm going to do. Okay, so hoping to see, obviously, since I'm short the spread, short NQ, long ES, that we broke this and flew down into the, the next volume area here, which would probably fuel my um, NQ down to this zone, kind of here in this high volume context here and here. That would have been my target to just kill the trade and flatten out. Okay, as a spread, I'm going to have to flatten out. I don't have any special tools manufactured yet here for Ninja to uh, um, control that with special fun key functions. But uh, anyway, we just get a leg in, leg out, and that's what we're going to do on on anything, regardless. Even if we break here and this becomes a loser, we're going to have to just flatten out and then reassess. Okay, that's the plan. So we're seeing some super reactive buying here and I'm just almost ready to say based on even the order flow I'm looking at on bookmap that I'm going to kill this spread because I don't want to lose the tiny little bit of money and I already seen more profits earlier. It's just the way the activity is and how thin it is what they're doing. It was such a huge fight here and 13.1 has been like that number. Again, we look at the auction and I told you guys about that area here on Friday definitely looks like we're probably not gonna be able to milk more out of this spread um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and just right click i'm just gonna you know i hate to do it but um i'm gonna see if there's gonna be one more possible test down um if not if we go up here above this 13 120 ish on the book then which we just had a big uh, order imbalance here but see if this breaks up past above here i'm gonna be looking at I'm watching this on another screen and um, I'm going to be looking to just go ahead and just pull that trade. Um, well, a couple hundred dollars spread. Maybe it'll be less by that time, right? If, I want to see if it breaks back down. Um, I wanted to get down and under that 13 one, but yeah, definitely a lot of bullish fighting going on here. Um, they don't want to give up this, this zone. And it was, this was quite a, uh, it was a little bit obvious on today's, um kind of pre-market view that we had right so go to positions here and i'll watch it one more time if it does another break above that 112 uh i'm gonna go ahead and just and just pull her off and in this case i'm gonna flatten it uh because uh i don't have any special spread tools created yet here on ninja trader so i gotta I got a leg in. I'm usually I'm legging in on the dome, and then I could just flatten out. So I'm marketing out. So you're gonna have to play this for now. NQ's breaking back down, t testing 13102. Just aggressive buying, stepping in again. If we can get one crack back down lower into like a 13090, uh, I'll probably just uh, maybe call it there. I don't know if that was weak selling. They were just, you know, pushing out. Again, we're in the spread. So we're short NQ, long ES. <clears throat> very reactive. Very reactive in this zone here. Um, situation. So. And they're going to test back down here again the second time where uh, buyers just really catapulted that price hard. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to right click. 
and I'll just be ready to flatten. Yeah, I'm flattening. So really, kind of what that does, gave us 186 bucks. You know, one trade, we got to participate in um, the meanies. And, um, you know, that's it for now. That's what I got for now. Um, after commissions, 186.64, that's one spread. And we pretty much took the spread from here to here. Now, yeah, we could have made 500 bucks trading NASDAQ. But at the same time, our, you know, drawdown could have been a lot worse. Um, again, here's where we are. Of course, this can certainly keep selling off. I wanted to get down into this zone. This is where I was going to be wrong. And then I would have went look to go for this direction. We got to look for 30 minute auction rotation breaks <clears throat> to have higher probability than maybe look at some strength. See, my goal is to get here <laughs> and probably will do it. Uh, I can't digest the way I see the auction right now. Um, in the market, it's just, uh, I, my personal expectation is tight range and rotation, but you know, this can continue down and get to where we wanted. And I think essentially we were going to make potentially about 500 bucks based on my experience on uh, where this thing is going. And there's the break. You can see the book map. People ask why I use it. And just this big break here earlier on. Um, that order. Oh man, that was the trade. <laughs> it all happens all the time. But hey, you know, that's again, lack of my impatience. And that's what spreads do. Spreads do help. The impatience, even on the entry, you know, where it might have been too soon for you, the spread helps reduce that um, that impact that that um, <clears throat> you put on yourself. Again, you see here, big reaction again. A little bit of buying volume coming in, but definitely just sellers just pushing this thing down. Um, supporting it here yet at this level, but um, they made an attempt. So I think this time around, it can really, things can really go. Um, but again, I'm, I'm spreading this thing and I'm creating myself high probability, um, less risk trades. Again, you can do this in anything. You can do it in crude oil. You can calendar crude oils. <clears throat> you can do, um, Russell. Again, my opinion, and let me show you guys a chart. Here's where, <clears throat> you know, really good trade. You know, we could have been looking at buying a couple of Russells in the morning. Um, about half after the first half hour auction, it was pretty clear that Russell was outperforming. Um, would have been doing two lots of that. Could have sold NQ. And this would have been a big win. We probably would have had a thousand dollar day here. Um, but what we did, we got a little bit safer. We went with the super correlations. We sold NQ and then we bought an ES. Okay. And so that's kind of like how we're playing that. And again, because of our, uh, we still looking at the market auction theory and then order flow. Order flow being last for confirmation, this thing again is being fought back up. Um, but but yeah, it's still a good short, guys. This was one trade I took today. Um, almost a couple hundred dollar winner, less stress, no drama. Um, literally, I mean, our risk adverse excursion did go up to about the same we pulled. But again, like I said, expectation today was not going to be super big trending day. And so you got to be a little bit dynamic um, in certain days with yourself. Be real with yourself that uh, on um, what you see on the PNL is just what you're going to get. Over the long term is where spreading is going to get you the the big bucks, you know. Anyway, guys, uh, have a good day out there and uh, tune in, subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. I really think spreading with the volatility that, that exists right now intraday Spreading equities is something um, you can really look at. I don't like to personally teach it anymore. I've pulled away from coaching, teaching. I haven't found a way to, uh, you know, I haven't figured anything with that yet, how to do that. Uh, it's my time is so constrained. So anyway, um, but if you do have questions, I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, if there's something I can do, maybe some personal consulting, I'd be happy to do that for you. All right, guys, everyone have a good week. Okay, bye.